The core breaker could be one of the most powerful finish skills. So how should you build Gamma 1 and Gamma 2's hidden potential? How's it everybody? Celtic Link here. We're back for another Dokkan battle video. In today's video, we are taking a look at the brand new LR Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 from this year's 9th anniversary. This is the part 2 Carnival LR and man, are they surprisingly good and have quite the powerful finish skill. So in this video, we're going to take a look at everything they're doing and try to figure out what is the best hidden potential build for them. So kicking things off, we have a Carnival LR, which means they are a super heroes lead for 200%. On their 18 key, they're greatly raising attack and defense for the turn. And on their 12 key, they are raising attack and defense for the turn. So that's a 50% raise and a 30% raise. Not much else there, unfortunately. Now, on their passive, they have key 3, attack and defense 125%. They gain an additional key 3, attack and defense 125% when 30% or higher. They give superheroes, joint forces, defenders of justice, uh, allies, key 3, and attack and defense 50%. Gotta love that 50% support. They have a chance to perform a critical hit 30% and perform an additional super attack up to twice per turn per int key sphere obtained. So that means with some hidden potential investment, they could do possibly four supers they also have a chance to perform critical hit um 12 and perform an additional attack that has a great chance of performing uh becoming a super attack with AG agl or str key spheres so very very helpful there now, they have an additional attack defense and reduced damage received by 30% from the turn in which they perform their third attack in battle. So, their base form does leave a lot to be desired. Now, where they really come into form is once you can activate that standby mode, where for four turns, um, you basically can build their charge count to unleash a devastating finish skill, the uh, core breaker attack from the uh, movie. So um, once they transform, or I guess standby, whatever you want to call it, right? Once they get to that stage, they now have key six, attack and defense 250%, um, and they reduce damage received by 50%. They also have an additional attack defense 50% when attacking. They keep their 50% support, um, and they also have a chance to perform a critical hit 30%, um, and an additional super attack with an int keys for obtain. Now, if you get AGL or STR key spheres, uh, two at least, right, they get 12% uh, critical hit and 70% uh, chance to perform a super attack. So really, the only thing that changes there is they have a guaranteed 50% damage reduction. Now, once you launch the finish skill, um, where is it? Uh, they get in a raise 100% per charge counter and then cause super ultimate damage, which also stuns the enemy and then exchanges back into Gamma 1, right? Obviously, because, you know, Gamma 2 dies spoiler alerts um but once there he's now key three attack and defense 150 percent reducing damage received by 15 percent he has an additional key three and attack and defense 150 percent um and reducing damage received as long as you are 30 percent or higher so that's a 30 percent raise they also have an additional attack defense 50 percent when attacking they have uh, he keeps the 50 percent support so that's something that's just not going to go away and has an additional super attack uh guaranteed he changes agl to n so this will help kind of get what they need right um and then from there they also have a chance to form a critical hit 20% up to um, 100% and reduce damage received up to another 50% per int or key sphere obtained, int or STR key sphere obtained. So this is actually really, really helpful given the fact that he is orb changing, right? So he can get a total of 70% damage reduction if you make it out of that standby skill, making him very, very powerful defensively, right? Attack leaves a little bit to de be desired, but, you know, that's not really there for. Their big attack is the core breaker, which kind of gets into what their hidden potential, I think, should be. Now, there is a buildup of critical hit on them, right? So, I think, like, in the base form, when building that critical hit, um, 
you have the ability to get up to where is it 30 percent right and then uh on their base and then when they stand by you have another 30 percent right so you know not a lot of crit 30 percent is still a lot but it's you know there's they're still leaving a bit to be desired there so in my opinion i would say the best way to go about it if we scroll down here to the hidden potential skills right as an int type unit the highest uh they can get for additionals or combo anything that isn't dodge basically um is 15 which equates to about a 30 percent raise so Knowing what they do and the fact that they are greatly raising on their super attacks, I'm going to go that combo attack, or not combo attack, critical hit is the way to go with them, right? Uh, because you want that chance to critical hit um, on their finish skill. Uh, there's nothing worse, I tell you, than using a finish skill and it not critting, in my personal opinion. I would say critical hit and then you know sub additional attack they'll get you know with skill orbs you can get them to about the 30 percent additional tax but they really need that critical hit to take advantage of that uh skill because like i said 30 percent is a lot and they have that built in it just in a lot of cases just isn't enough um you'll find more often than not you not being able to activate that crit right we've all seen it happen on the z duo and on lr trunks where they just don't perform that critical hit with that final attack and sometimes that little bit of damage was the make or break for the f that final turn so in my opinion that's probably the best way to go um if not that then the alternative right build additional so you can have some extra attack and defense from that super attack with supplemental crit to make up for that uh to make up for that low critical hit chance right right if it was dodge and we said 30 percent, we would understand that that's a bad percentage rating but um i would say the same applies to critical hit here 30 percent is just a tad bit too low now you could go full dodge on them right with the intent basically being that hey you're basically you're worried about their pre-standby phase, right? If you're going that way, Rich. Which, if you can't get the Ant Key Spheres, can be kind of scary for them, right? That 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 turn can that that one or two turns before they uh, enter standby mode, um, or if they're even when they're in standby and they're taking hits pre-super without those Ant Key Spheres, they can take a bit of damage right if if things don't go your way so you could go dodge but then again by going dodge you're sacrificing that critical hit which may be the thing that you need in order to get them where they sh uh, to in order to get them you know doing the big damage number so it's there it's a it is a strategy but in my opinion for any character that has a finish skill critical hit is the way to go with them unless they have it built in at above 50 or 60 percent or higher uh, otherwise it's just it's it, it's too low to be counted on right so uh, that is it for the video, guys. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And in the comments down below, let me know what did you go with for your hidden potential build of the Gamma 1 and the Gamma 2. Like I said, I think critical hit is the best way to go to take full advantage of that finish skill on the off chance you can't proc that 30 percent um otherwise supplemental with additionals but i would love to hear your builds in the comments down below so guys yeah, that's it for the video if nothing else thanks for watching and aloha